Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we are talking about gut loading. I haven't done an updated gut loading video in a little bit and there actually has been some changes to the way that we should gut load our bugs. So we're going to update that video. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we get started on the process, what is gut loading? Gut loading is simply feeding your feeders a nutritious diet so that they are super healthy and nutritious for your animals when you feed them or else you're just kind of feeding them an empty shell which is not good for them so first off we are going to talk about gut loading for crickets and doobie roaches just because they are the two most common feeders that people are going to feed to their animals they're the most common staple feeder and the gut loading process is basically exactly the same for both of them first thing that you need when gut loading you need to have something to store your bugs in. So you need a container with some sort of ventilation at the top. This was a quick, terrible job that I did. Yeah, a container that closes, air holes. I just hot glued some window screen up here. For smaller crickets, you might need to grab something that's holes aren't as big as this. So this is drainage layer from Josh's frogs. That way tiny little pinhead crickets or eighth inch crickets can't get through the holes. And for both of these, the first thing that we need is egg crates or toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls. Try to avoid going all the way to the top because unless you have like a seal, sometimes the bugs can get out. So just don't go all the way to the top. Doobie roaches cannot climb smooth surfaces, so. This would look much better if you had egg flats. <laughs> Moving on to water, you can do this a couple different ways. The first way is water crystals. These are super handy because this becomes a lot of crystals. This becomes two gallons of water crystals. This is going to allow your feeders to get water without drowning in the water because bugs, especially crickets, will drown in a water dish if it's just water dishes. Thank you so much to my cousin for the amazing idea of just putting an ounce of these, which is half of this pack, in a gallon water jug. I just refill this when I'm ready, just fill it back up with water and put an ounce of water crystals. These came from Amazon. Everything I talk about will be linked down below so that you can find it easier. But yeah, and this thing lasts forever. The other option is just to take the, whatever you're gonna put their water in and put a wet paper towel in it. If you do this, you have to make sure that you change it often because wet paper towels are going to harbor bacteria. So you need to make sure you change that a super lot. Do not let it dry out and definitely don't let it get moldy or algae or anything like that but that is an option as well. The container that you use to put these in can be pretty much anything. I am using these little dishes from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of like 10 or something like that for a dollar and 25 cent now. You can use lids, you can use Tupperware, you can cut the bottoms off of soda bottles. You can do literally anything, but I just happen to have these. And then let's talk about feeding them. The easiest way is going to be to use vegetables. You can save scraps of vegetables, stems, anything like that that you normally cook with and feed that to them. That is going to be the absolute easiest and most inexpensive way. Or if you want to go more prepackaged, guaranteed to always have food sort of way, you can buy things like cricket calcium. This is from Petco, I think, or I think there is also a giant container from Josh's Frogs, which is the same thing. You can also do bearded dragon food pellet things. Crickets and doobie roaches love these. You can find these on sale, super, super cheap. A couple dollars and you have a container of these that'll last for a long time. Honestly, just do whatever you want. <laughs> Feed them however you feel best about feeding them. You also have the option of Rapashi's 
bug food. There are multiple different options here. One of the biggest reasons that I made this video is because since the last time I did one of these, it has now been found that you should definitely not be giving your Dubia roaches dog food. It has been found that Dubia roaches that consume dog food and then are fed to bearded dragons can increase the bearded dragon's risk of getting gout. So super important, I'm gonna use these. We are gonna be selling these in our shop. They have like a little ramp. I'm also gonna be using this. This was the first prototype that had stairs. The ones that we are now selling do not have stairs. They just have like this little textured ramp so they can climb up and down it. This one will go in here. This will go in here. I'm just going to do a mixture of So essentially you just wanna offer them foods that are high in nutrients and that are going to make them healthy for your animal. It's also super important that you keep these bins clean. Dubia roaches and crickets can get certain types of fungus and you don't want that. You want your reptiles to have the healthiest possible feeders. These are from Petco because I do not buy crickets very often. As you can see, some of them are already dead. They were alive on the drive home. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Container of dubia roaches. Um, I just cleaned out their bin. So these are just all the dubia roaches that I had. And we're just gonna dump them all in. This is a lot of people's worst nightmare. With crickets, huge thing. If you see dead crickets in your cricket container, make sure to get those out as soon as possible. When crickets die, they emit a gas and other crickets in their vicinity will also die and then it becomes this whole domino effect of dying crickets so make sure to get any dead crickets out as soon as you see that they are dead if at all possible it is best to let your bugs gut load for about 24 hours before you feed them to your animal and then after that 24 hours i mean they're gonna stay gut loaded as long as you continue to feed them if you are going to be breeding them for crickets, I honestly don't have any advice. They need to lose substrate. They need heat. That's all I got. For dubia roaches, they're actually super easy to breed during the summer. Mine will just breed by themselves without me doing anything at all. But basically just make sure that they are given food and water and stick a heat pad to the side of that bin. Make sure it's not getting like crazy hot. Just heating it up like a little bit, they will breed by themselves. You don't have to do anything. You'll just see a bunch of little tiny baby dubia roaches in your enclosure. Moving on to mealworms and superworms. This is the most basic way to set them up. This is just an old five gallon tank with an I Heart Geckos <laughs> lid just sitting on top. Um, that way I can just kind of works out nicely. Just leaving them in here just kind of leaves them to breed and you can see the beetles, you can see the mealworms. There's baby mealworms in the bottom of this. Same with superworms. Superworms will not breed this way. Superworms cannot be next to each other in order to pupate. They have to be separated in order to turn into beetles in order to breed. Um, so you have to have multiple different areas. In order to feed these guys super, super easy, you want to make sure that they are on a base of something like oatmeal or oat bran. And I also like to mix some of this into that base as well. And then anytime that you see that they need food, you're just gonna dump some in there. I know that there's a doobie roach in there. I don't know how he got in there. You're just gonna put some greens in there. Again, same thing with superworms. Just dump food on top and they'll eat it. Huge note about superworms, make sure that they are staying fed. Superworms will eat each other if they do not have adequate food sources. Make sure you are keeping foods in there as much as possible. But I'm super excited because I was sent a new method to try out. If you guys watched my original gut loading video, you know, I think it was the gut loading video. You know that I was complaining about the fact that in here, I don't know if you can see them, there are tiny, tiny little baby mealworms. And I didn't know how to get that out. 
but also clean this at the same time. The Buck Factory reached out and asked if I wanted to try one of these out because this is the solution to my problem. They sent me this kit for free. They are not paying me to say anything about this. They just wanted me to test it. So we're gonna do that. These are super cool because these get rid of that whole issue where it's just one giant pile of random things. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to fill one of these with mealworms and we are going to gut load those mealworms. And once those mealworms start to pupate, which I do have some pupa in there, they get moved to this. They turn into beetles up here. They fall down here. They breed their eggs fall under here. You just move the beetles to the next container and then you have a continuous supply of mealworms. All right, so then we're just going to... I highly suggest saving these lids and cups because you can kind of cut these out and use these to hold the water and food in the Doobie Roach and Cricut containers. For feeding mealworms, you have the same options, but I almost always, with the exception of that Cricut calcium, I almost always use veggies. Usually I just use stems. Mealworms always seem to really like it and it also provides water for them so you don't have to worry about little water cups and essentially you just wait until you start seeing pupa and you put those into the next container but i'm just going to pull some out of this this is a pupa this is what you're looking for to put up here it is like a little alien thing like it just kind of moves around like a, a little alien Hopefully this works out for me. Hopefully this becomes an awesome little continuous system and I can just kind of harvest mealworms instead of having to sort through a whole bunch of rubble. Um, I will keep you guys updated on that. Obviously you don't have to get one of these in order to gut load your mealworms, but it seems very promising that this is going to be a good investment and that I am probably gonna order more. You also can, if you would like, gut load your mealworms or buy already gut loaded mealworms and then stick them in the refrigerator. They will go to sleep and they will stay gut loaded when you're ready to feed those to your animal. You just take them out, thaw them out and feed them to the animals. And as for other sorts of bugs, we have hornworm. Hornworms come in a container that already has their gut load in the container. So all you have to do is flip that cup upside down where the food is on top so that way their waste can fall to the bottom and that's it. They are gut loaded. That is the only thing that they should be eating. Hornworms are also called tomato worms because they will eat tomato plants. However, do not feed tomato plants to your hornworms because if they eat those, they will become toxic to your animal. Just stick with the gut load that comes with the hornworms. And that is it. That is all that I have for this week's video. Hopefully you learned how to properly gut load your bugs. Super important that you are always gut loading those bugs to ensure that you are feeding the most nutritious food source to your animals. If you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out is here, and this week's subscribe shout out is here. Thank you so much for liking and following, subscribing, and sharing, and commenting, and all that jazz. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Um, so hopefully this works out for me. Hopefully this, not you, mealworm. Hopefully, uh, oh, I guess I should. Oh.